respected vice chancellor of uh, CMR University, Dr. Shivakumar, esteemed principal and dean of CMR Law College, Dr. Professor Sudramanya, esteemed members of the teaching faculty of CMR Law College, beloved students who have taken a conscious decision to get admitted in this uh, excellent law college, and their beloved parents, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me much pleasure to be in the midst of students who have taken a decision to join this college in, in order to pursue the education in law. First of all, I must assure you, and it's my duty to assure you, that CMR University is one of the best universities in the state of Karnataka, not only in Karnataka, in India. The chairman, the chancellor, the vice chancellor, the deans of different colleges run under the umbrella of this university are committed to provide and give good, valuable education to the students. I know Mr. K. C. Ramuthi, chairman of this institution, a Rajasthan member personally, well, he is a man committed to give quality education to the students irrespective of the cost he may incur in managing the institutions and the other law. Dr. Shukumar himself was the principal of a great uh, engineering college, National Institute of Engineering, Suratka, for more than 10 years and he has rich experience not only in teaching uh, the engineering subject but also in managing the institutions. So far as Dr. Subramanya has concerned, he is uh, a valuation of mine. I know him personally well. He was uh, one of the finest uh, vice chancellors of Karnataka Law University. He was uh, responsible for bringing some uh, radical changes in the whole education system, legal education system in the state of Karnataka. Uh, everybody who is associated with uh, the law colleges in the legal education know very well about the invaluable contribution that Dr. Subramanya has made in the field of uh, legal education. Therefore, I first of all congratulate the parents of the students who have got admitted to this institution that they have taken, that they have taken a very conscious decision to get their children admitted in this institution and uh, be rest assured that your children uh, would, who have got admitted would really become worthy citizens of India. <coughs> Friends, your academic activities will come in soon. You will be in college for five years, those who are uh, at three years respectively. Education in law is a challenging uh, uh, course. It's unlike other uh, education because if you once, if you become a law graduate and if you make up the profession of law, you are expected to know everything under the sun. You are expected to know everything under the sun. Let us assume that uh, a case under an information technology act is filed against some person. Say he has uh, uh, sent some uh, messages and that message, it appears is a defamatory nature. Some case will be filed against him, not only for defamation, but also under the relevant provisions of uh, the Information Technology Act. Then, if such an advocate who wants to represent the accused must know the nuances of uh, these uh, computer uh, techniques. If a building collapses and the contractor is sued for damages, so in that the contractor may take up many defenses. The advocate appearing on behalf of the plaintiff who is aggrieved because of the damage caused to the building must know what is soil foundation technology. What are the various systems involved in putting up a construction of a house? Suppose a criminal case is filed. Let us assume that in a murder case, if the accused engages an advocate, the advocate must know about the medical legal aspects 
a first partner will be conducted by the, by the concerned doctor and that doctor will be a witness and he will be examined on behalf of the prosecution. While cross-examining, he must know for anatomy, physiology, all subtleties of medicines and medical profession must be known by that advocate. Therefore, a judge who conducts cases is called as an expert. In terms of section 45 of the Evidence Act, a judge is called as expert of experts. The expert of experts on the section 73 of the, the Evidence Act. What does it mean? I am basically a commerce graduate. If a case is brought before me, let us assume a case is brought before me in regard to the manipulation of handwriting. Now, I will have to examine which is the admitted handwriting and which is the manipulated handwriting. So, if a judge were to be considered as an expert, under section, uh, an expert of experts under section 73 of the Indian Evidence Act, I being a layman to the scientific examination, will not be able to do things. We will not be able to do effective comparison between the two, but still law considers a judge as an expert of experts. That means to say that even though a judge may not be proficient in the subject, he is expected to know and it, it is the duty of the advocates appearing before the courts to assist the court in coming to an appropriate conclusion. Why I am bringing this to the knowledge of those who have just entered this is this is a very challenging profession. Legal profession is a challenging profession. I hope majority of the students who have got admitted may be having an intention to practice as advocates. And few of them may be, may be interested in joining law firms, corporate firms, multinational companies, and even government and government agencies as law officers. Still, you are expected to know. Let us assume that uh, you are not interested in becoming, in becoming an advocate. You are interested in joining a law firm or a, a multinational company as a law officer or a legal advisor or a government to advise on legal matters. You are expected to know the basic substantive laws, the constitution law which is the edifice of all laws. Constitution is the mother of all laws. All the provisions of all other laws will be tested on the touchstone of the various provisions of the constitution. Therefore, we call constitution as the mother of all laws. For those who take up the legal profession, constitution is like a Bible, it's like a Quran, it's like a Mahabharata, it's like a, a Ramayana. Therefore, from the beginning, please cultivate the habit of studying, not reading. Studying. Reading with intent is called as studying. So you have to develop, you have already developed a culture of studying, you have to intensify that culture of uh, reading with intent in a greater manner. Because you have to face many, many uh, uh, problematic situations and you have to find solutions when you take up the profession of law or when you join the law firm or the, a corporate company. Friends, gone are those days where the legal education was considered as a second-rate education. There were no permanent buildings for law colleges. Law was being taught only as a part-time either in the morning or in the evening. And that used to be in a corner of a very big building where other courses were used to be sent. There, were, there used to be no permanent lecturers. Most of the lecturers who used to teach were the advocates and they were requested by the management. Because of their experience and the request made by the management, the advocates were coming forward. And the salaries and perks of those uh, teachers who used to teach law in earlier days in private colleges was very, very minimal. Now, a paradigm shift is found in the legal education. With the introduction of five years course in law, there has been a paradigm shift. Dr. Subramanya has analyzed the history of the journey of the legal education in India. First, 
there was two years course, then three years course, now five years course. 1985 was the introduction of this five years course at Hatsok and thanks to uh, late Dr. Uh, Madhavan Banat, the first uh, Vice Chancellor of the uh, National Law University, he was one of the strongest uh, proponents of five year education system, five year legal education system. As a result of the set five year legal education course, most of the students who seek admission are interested in pursuing law. Earlier, the, those, only those who did not get any ad in admission in any other professional courses or did not get any appointment or retired people only used to join the law college. Therefore, the quality of the lawyers was not to the extent expected. Now there has been a parallel shift. Many, many five-year law course students are taking up the profession of law as a permanent, as an independent profession and they are thriving very well. Not only conventional disputes under the uh, uh, personal laws and substantive laws, certain other specializations have also come to be. For example, there are experts who are, ex they are experts in tax matters. There are experts in space law. There are experts in maritime law. There are experts in medical legal cases. There are experts in arbitration. There are experts in, uh, say, uh, company matters, corporate matters. Now, the scope of legal education has widened. There are unknown opportunities for the law school students, the students who, come, who come out of uh, the uh, law schools. You may be wondering some of the uh, law school students they are offered 30 lakhs, 40 lakhs even before they pass out of uh, their law colleges. So that is the demand. Now, apart from that, now this public policy, if, if uh, the law students have a fair idea of the public policy, they can advise the government on various policy issues concerned with law. You may be now seeing many IAS, that is uh, civil service uh, candidates, are from the background of legal education. Such students who come out of law schools and who pass out of the pass out the pass out of uh, pass the civil service examination, they will do bureaucrats because many a time they will have discharge their quasi judicial functions and and they can be the effective quasi judicial authorities also. Friends, the legal education in India is taking a fine shape. The millennium wants good students. Only such students can thrive well who work hard, who burn their midnight oil. There is no substitute for thought. There is no substitute for discipline. Because the moment you have joined this college, I am very confident that discipline will be enforced to the maximum extent. Cultivate discipline to the maximum extent. When I was coming in the car, one of the law school students told me that students who come from who have come from Tibet are also studying with them. He was making a mention about their discipline, about their hard work. And I was very thrilled to hear uh, those words from the student who traveled with me. Therefore, there is no substitute for hard work. And you have to respect the teachers who teach law. Sometimes you may feel that, the, that some lecturer or lecturers may not be to the expected extent, extent as you do, but you have no right to criticize them. You have no right to comment upon them. If you find any inadequacy in such teacher, the library of this college is open all the 24 hours. You can make research, you can read the books, you can acquire knowledge. Not only study of uh, the law books, books other than law must also be read by you. For example, I was reading a book called The Case for India. It is a book written by the Durant. 
a great English man. You will be understood that Durant in his Bible studied the culture of Hindus in India for a very long period and he is an authority on Hindu law. You will be understood there are eight or nine volumes of Hindu law written by Bill Durant. In that book, Case for India, Bill Durant has given a neat account of the exploitation of Indians by the British. Therefore, it is a book written by an Englishman about the exploitation of Indians by English. It's a very small book by Strand uh, publication. So, you will understand as to how artificial drugs were manufactured by Britishers and how tax were collected and how our material wealth was plundered and how we were subjugated. I was reading one more book called Mahabharata Vaisya Rapsi Raghupalata. Most of us in India are expected to know the nuances of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Mahabharata is a small book published by Bhavan's General Bharati of India. See, Raghupalata is the author of the book. If you read that small book, you will come to know the whole Mahabharata. You may not read volumes of Mahabharata. So, there are many, many books. For example, uh, M. Justice M. C. Chakla was one of the greatest uh, judges of India. He was the Chief Justice of uh, Bombay High Court for about 10 years. He was one of the uh, excellent judges. And the, the autobiography written by him is called, is, he has the title, Roses in December. It is a, it's also a Bharati of India publication. He was not only a Chief Justice of Bombay High Court, he was uh, the Union Minister for uh, uh, the External Affairs, he was the Union Minister for Education, he was the uh, High Commissioner and in his different capacities he did, he uh, had contributed in a next semester. Those are all the books which one has to read other than that. You may not find time to read all those books, but at least during vacation, make it a point to read one or two. Justice M.M. Mentachalaya, the great chief, who was the part of Chief Justice of uh, in, uh, uh, the uh, no, Supreme Court, is a voracious reader. He said he retired in the month of October 1994. So 25 years have already passed by. He's, he, he's, he has had more than 1,000 books after his retirement. He gave me an example. He gave me a tip. He said, read 10 pages a day. So if one were to read 10 pages of a book a day, it will be 3,650. So 3,650 means about uh, say 12 to 15 books a year. So 15 books a year into 25. Read. How many books he has already read? He reads more than 10 pages a day. But the simple tip given by Justice Venkatacharya is that one has to cultivate the habit of reading any book, especially for those in the field of law or expected to read books other than law also and thereby they must equip themselves. For example, your uh, esteemed dean, Dr. Subramanya, has read most of the works of Dr. S. Radha. He is an authority on international law. He is one of the few authorities in India about international law. You give him any subject, he will speak authoritatively for hours together. You are fortunate to have such uh, dean who is supported by wonderful team of uh, teachers here. The quality is the benchmark of this institution. Therefore, it is for you to make use of the quality education that will be imparted here. And please understand that your parents have, have made, they have taken a decision to see that you are admitted. You might have taken a decision and they have fallen and they might have fallen with your view. Or they may have persuaded you to join the education. Either way, it's a good decision. Anyhow, their uh, motto is to see that you come out of the law college in blind colors as a good human being also. Uh, one of the greatest, uh, uh, Lord Denning, one of the greatest uh, judges of uh, the English courts was uh, makes a reference about the qualities that a judge should have. He says a judge should be first a gentleman. And listing out the various requirements, 
On the last, he says, no, no matter, it has a little legal sense. So, one has to be a gentleman first. You have to friend, good commentary here. You should have more friends, make good discussion, and have good decision, interaction with them, and that friendship should remain ever in your life. How you make it? It is done. Please cultivate good habits. If you have, if you have the habit of, uh, say, painting, singing, please cultivate that extracurricular habit also. And college, support such students. And make it a point to eat healthy food. What is healthy food? It is left to you only. You will come to know which is healthy, which is not healthy. You will know your abdomen will tell, your body will, uh, uh, will show reactions. So, if alternate reaction is shown, avoid that. Keep yourself fit. Try to do yoga or exercise. Because a good mind, a good body, a, a, a sound mind is a sound body. So, a good body is also required. It is, it is said that if one has to achieve something, he has to have a good body also apart from good mind. A combination of good mind and good body will enable you to pursue this education with all vigor. Coming out of the law college with flying colors is must be your motto and you must always fulfill the dreams that your parents have while I'm giving you this education. Please understand, they will pay, they will incur huge expense, expenditure for you, for you. They do not disclose the difficulties they face while admitting you. They somehow want to conceal all those things. And they do not want their children to know their difficulties. Their only motto is, in spite of their difficulties, if you, if they, if the children come out in flying colors, that is the greatest satisfaction. The parents have in their life is to see that their children are well educated, they have, they have, they have become a good uh, human beings. Friends, this is an era of competition. This is an era of competition. Only the strongest and the fittest will survive in this struggle. This is nothing but a struggle. India, is, India in this 21st century has to come out as a great nation. We are striving hard to come out as a, strive, as a great nation. Do not know the problems that India has. Now, see in Kashmir Valley, 35,000 troops, our soldiers have already been deployed. You do, you do not know the problems that India faces every day at the borders. We have China, a superpower on the one hand, a hostile nation, Pakistan on the other hand. And don't think that Bangladesh is also a great friend of us. It was also a part of Pakistan once in 1970 it was seven and it became an independent nation. Many of the Bangladeshis have already infiltrated into our nation and therefore national disturbances is going on. We are facing problems. We do not know. In the world there are two groups. Though Cold War is over, on the one side, China wants to show its hegemony, and on the other side, United States wants to show its hegemony. We are, we are, we are likely to become a superpower within a few years, and those who have already become superpowers do not want India to become a superpower. So, how to make it? It is only by the way of excellence. You have to excel, excel in your studies. You have to excel in your extracurricular activities. So, Article 51 AJ of the Constitution of India focuses on the individual excellence and the societal, that is collective excellence. So, therefore, students as a whole, you will be collectively contributing to the birth of the, uh, the growth of the nation. Individually, you will grow intellectually, as well as physically, as well as in other terms also. Therefore, how you shape your life is left to you. Your parents have given all freedom. 
If they have admitted you to the one of the best law colleges, I assure you once again, I assure you and reiterate that this is one of the best law colleges in, in India. And don't go by the rankings given in India today. Go by the ranking of the quality of education that is imparted in this education. I once again assure you that uh, Dr. Subramanya, even at this stage, is a very, very crusader, great crusader of the legal education. He was closely associated with Dr. Madhav Menon, who was uh, the first vice chancellor of law university. He has taught in many, many big colleges. I have already told you that he was one of the best vice chancellors that Karnataka Law University has ever seen. Therefore, you are assured of quality education, you are assured of uh, good quality environment, you, environment uh, around you, and it is for you to make up a proper choice to grow in your life. I am grateful to the organizers, more particularly uh, to our esteemed Vice Chancellor Dr. Shukumar and uh, your esteemed Dean Dr. Subramanya in giving me an opportunity to speak a few words on uh, this occasion and uh, begin this academic uh, uh, activity. Please, every day you have to have a grant. So, what is today's program? What I am expected to do? So before going to bed, please make a note about uh, the progress you have made. If you could not make, if you could not achieve something of the uh, list of the day, you have to see that it is done the next day. So you have to keep a diary of your activities. How much amount do you spend? You are, you are free to spend, but how much amount you spend for each item? Then look back. Only one animal which look back about the way it has spent is life. Simhavaloka. You should always have a Simhavaloka. Talk, keep talking to your parents. Give a report card of your progress in the college to them. They will be very, very happy to listen to you. They will be anxious to listen to you. Because every parent will feel very happy about the report for uh, 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 his uh, child and make a solemn pledge to come out to get good education, to stand up to the expectation of your uh, parents and this great nation. Thank you.